All right, in this unit, we're going to be focusing on, on the major molecules that help with life processes or the functioning of life. And we call these large life molecules macromolecules. Or another name would be organic molecules, or another name would be biomolecules. They can be referred to these three names, but we're talking about the same thing, these major molecules of life. All right, now when we're talking about these molecules, let's get some naming out of the way, some science terminology, so we'll know what we're talking about when we use these terms. Uh, prefixes to help us determine the number of parts of these different macromolecules are in front of you. Mono means one, di means two, poly means three or more. So example, a monomer would be one part or one unit. A uh, dimer would be two of them, two units or two parts, and then a polymer would be three or more, so it means many parts. So when we're referring to these macromolecules throughout these videos, um, make sure that you understand mono versus di versus poly. It means the number of parts that we're looking at. All right, how do we make these different parts? How do we go from a monomer to a dimer to a polymer? Well, there are two processes. One process is called dehydration synthesis. One process is called hydrolysis. If we're going to take two parts and combine them to make a bigger part, so if we're going to take two monomers and combine them to make a dimer, or if we're going to take a dimer and a monomer and combine them to make a polymer, the process is called dehydration synthesis, and this is how it works. If you look at this picture, notice that each unit has a, has a hydroxide group on one end and a hydrogen group on the other end. That's how they form naturally in nature. If we're going to combine two different units, we can combine the hydrogen of one end and the hydroxide of the other end. When we combine those, we form water, H2O. The forming of water gets removed. This water is going to be removed through the dehydration process, and when it's removed, a bond is formed, and we get a long polymer chain. So the way dehydration synthesis works, you form water. Okay, you form water with the two ends, the hydrogen end of one and the hydroxide end of the other sugar. This is one sugar. This is another sugar. You, you bond those two together, or you form water by connecting those two. You dehydrate that water. And then a bond forms and you have a new larger molecule formed as a result. That is dehydration synthesis. We'll go over this in more detail later. But that's the process of how you make bigger parts. When you can combine monomers or combine dimers and form polymers. Large, uh, large chains. If you have a large chain or a large uh, unit like a big polymer. And you want to break this big polymer up into individual pieces. The water can be added back in that will break the bond and result in the individual hydrogen and hydroxide parts um, of the individual pieces. So you can take this large polymer, you can add water, that breaks the bond, and then you have your individual sugars. Now you have an individual sugar here, you have an individual sugar here. That is called hydrolysis. So when you add water back in, it breaks the bonds into and it allows the the parts to become individual that is hydrolysis so that's in a nutshell how dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis works to make bigger parts make mo uh, polymers and how to break those polymers down into the individual monomers okay so we got the background out of the way let's start jumping into these uh, these organic molecules there are four carbohydrates lipids proteins nucleic acids we're going to do individual videos on each one so we can spend a little bit of time on them. We're going to focus on carbohydrates first. So a carbohydrate, you should recognize the name. You should be able to recognize what they are. But a carbohydrate is going to be composed of three elements. Remember we looked in the last unit at the major elements that go into forming life. Of those major ones, we're going to be focusing on carbohydrates as three. There are three that are going to be in carbohydrates. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And they always form in a one to two to one ratio. Which that means is every one carbon is going to bond with two hydrogens and then one oxygen to make a carbohydrate. An example, glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. 
you can divide all those numbers by six and it gives you a one to two uh, to one ratio. What's the function of carbohydrates? The function is to give us quick energy. We need quick energy for whatever process we're doing, whether it's sitting in your chair, uh, listening to this video, whether it's sleeping, whether it's running, playing a sport, doing band, talking, texting on your phone, whatever you're doing, you need energy. Sometimes you need quick energy. And we can get that quick energy from the food we eat, like fruits and vegetables or our grains. Common names of carbohydrates, we just refer to these carbohydrates as sugars and starches. Now we can identify if we're talking about a sugar by the letters that end in the name of that sugar. For example, if you look up here at glucose, glucose ends in OSE. All sugars will end in those three letters, OSE. Glucose, fructose, sucrose, galactose. Okay, so an easy way to recognize if we're talking about a sugar is all sugars end in the three letters OSE. All right, so types or categories of, of our carbohydrates. You have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. What does mono mean again? Mono means one, so we have one. Saccharide means sugar, so a monosaccharide is a one sugar unit or a single sugar. So this is the simplest type of carbohydrate we have. Glucose is a good example. Here's a nice picture of what a glucose, single glucose molecule looks like. Disaccharides, di means two, so two sugars. So in essence, a disaccharide is, is two monosaccharides joined together. Here's one monosaccharide, here's the other saccharide. They're bonded together. This is a disaccharide, so two sugars. Sucrose is uh, a good example of, of a disaccharide sugar. Here's how you can make disaccharides. Once again, using dehydration synthesis, you take two monosaccharides, you take out the water, it forms a bond, then you get a disaccharide. So dehydration synthesis. All right, now polysaccharides. Poly means many, so three or more. You take three or more monosaccharides, you join them together, you get a polysaccharide. A good example of a polysaccharide found in animals is glycogen. A good example of polysaccharides found in plants is starch. Some more examples, cellulose. Cellulose is also found in plants. It's going to be used for the support and structure of cell walls, give the plants the ability to grow up towards the sun. Chitin or chitin, however you want to say it, is a type of polysaccharide found in animals. It's actually found in the exoskeleton of insects and fungi. So a brief rundown one more time. Carbohydrates, quick energy. We get it from fruits and vegetables uh, and grains like pastas and breads. There are three categories of carbohydrates monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Mono meaning one, so one sugar units. Disaccharides mean two sugars for that particular uh, makeup. And then polysaccharides mean three or more. We can combine multiple monosaccharides through dehydration synthesis. That's the process where we can combine them together, forming bonds to make them bigger. We can break down polysaccharides Okay, we can break down polysaccharides into the individual units by removing the, uh, by uh, adding water back in through hydrolysis.